New Age Business Briefings brought to you by the SABC and today we're in Peter Maritzburg and we're talking to the Premier of the province, uh, Honourable uh, Senzam Kuna. And just before the break we were talking about uh, uh, local government, uh, municipalities and delivering to the people because basically these are the guys on the front line of this whole equation and uh, MEC Dube was about to share a comment with us in terms of how we can make sure that these uh, municipalities are getting their job done. MEC? Thank you um, very much. Um, the, the, the issue of municipal governance in Guazul Natal, first of all, um, what we appreciate is that within 14 years um, of transforming um, local government, we've really moved a lot in terms of ensuring that uh, we have capacity at municipal level to can deliver to the expectations of our communities. Um, the one thing that uh, we have been uh, doing as well is that on the technical side, we're very short on engineering skills. Um, we have also big programs where we have what is called the shared services, where at least we're saying no municipalities um, should not have a capacity of access to engineers as well as the other technical skills. So we do share at the district level, we do share those um, uh, engineering skills. Um, the issue of uh, Umklatuza municipality, for instance, um, working with ESCOM, um, we had a problem whereby the cables were about 30 years old, the infrastructure did collapse, uh, but uh, since now we can assure you that the municipality has been able to have a separate line which is services those industries and we can guarantee that uh, we are not going to be seeing um, those problems at any, any near future. Um, around the issue of capacity as well, our municipalities, we have very um, a, a many programs that we are having, um, working with the provincial treasury, such as ensuring that our technical people, our uh, accountants, our uh, chief engineers um, as well, um, are shared among municipalities. We have quite a number of uh, uh, municipalities where we are also doing skills audit. Because as I say, within our 14 years in democracy at local government level, we have to take stock as to what is it that is making municipalities not to tick. And part of the problem is that indeed we do have people with the previous skills that were not compatible with what is expected at the local government level. So we have to re-engineer, but also retrain um, local government or municipal um, officials to ensure that they respond to the challenges that we are facing now um, in our government. Of course, um, it's not something that is going to take us um, a few years. Uh, we are working hard indeed. Uh, for instance, the issue of energy um, that the minister, deputy minister was talking about. We have a very good program that we have uh, in the north and in Tungulu municipality where we're using cow duck to actually power a number of households in the rural areas, and it's working a great mm -hmm. deal. You'll be surprised that the whole village, um, uh, people have got their all independent uh, power supplies through mm -hmm. the Kaudang program, and uh, a number of other people. We're also encouraging municipalities to have program of uh, energy saving, because without us saving energy, we're not going to win. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the okay. issue of having enough supplies in the country. All right. What about corruption? Because that's part of the problem of uh, not delivering. And, uh, you know, we've had the Manasse reports that have said that uh, people are living large at the expense of the people. So what are we doing about that? Because, you know, it, it's at that level where corruption is easy and that's where the service delivery issues kick in. We were very tough in dealing with corruption in Guazulu Natal, I must be honest with you. And we have intervened in a number of municipalities. Um, we have about more than uh, 13 cases in court uh, where people have been arrested and they are undergoing uh, criminal charges. Uh, we've had uh, more than uh, 30 people that have been dismissed and we are actually uh, recovering those monies through their pension funds and um, a, a other means of recovering money. Why, why did it happen? You know, I mean, you're telling me about the people that you've caught, which means there's a lot more that haven't. But where, where does this culture come that people think could we, we can start stealing and enjoying our lives at the expense of the people? 
I think it's a wrong um, a culture indeed. And, and it is a, a, a serious disease, a cancerous disease that we have to nip in the bud. Uh, and what we've said to our communities is that whatever form, however color it comes on, you have to report it. You have to tell us, even if it's a small sign, mm. even if you take a picture, or even if you give, give us any evidence that we get, or any smell that there might be or there mm. is a sign of corruption, we go in there and we deal with it. Okay. And that is how we have been uh, uh, dealing with the issue of corruption in municipalities. But what I can assure the, the, the viewers and yourself is that we are dealing with it. We chase it, mm. we fight it, um, we can tell you a number of stories and people are reporting. And we are showing that we are dealing with it. We do not uh, keep quiet. We fight. And we're COVID. also reading the system of, of those dimension. corrupt elements. All right. Let me see. Dube, thank you very much indeed. Premier, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just want to add one dimension on corruption. Um, uh, most often, it would appear that a municipality or a government department uh, or government itself is corrupt. Whereas, in fact, it starts with uh, a person mm -hmm. uh, who would then, um, you know, drive people in, in, on, on the way, subjugate others mm -hmm. and, and, and really override them into, into corruption. It, when you look at it uh, and, and investigate it, you will find that it starts with one or two people mm -hmm. who one individual, then partnering, yeah. then partnering, and then partnering, and then uh, something yes, grows. Cancer uh, grows. Uh, All yeah. right. People are saying that the only people that are benefiting are the ones that are close to power. So that if you've got a friend who's high up in the ANC in the province, then you're going to do okay. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? People are saying that uh, without getting uh, dropping names and uh, getting assistance from people that are in senior positions, this sort of thing wouldn't happen. Yeah, no, I think, I think we have to confront uh, uh, corruption, both uh, um, uh, in terms of perception and, and, and in terms of real corruption. And that's the only way to mm. do it. Uh, and and take, take the decisive actions uh, where we can. And, and actually demonstrate that uh, mm. we are determined to mm. read our province so, and our municipalities. So this Tonga Mall thing, for example, I mean, here's a guy who's uh, had shoddy work in other areas before, but continues to get tenders, continues to get uh, uh, opportunities. How is that possible unless he's got friends? We, we, right now, uh, Peter, we, we, we have a, a committee in the, in the cabinet of course, Natal, that is uh, looking at uh, the tender awards from, from uh, 2009, just to look at what, what, what picture will, uh, will, will it show, who has been getting what tender, mm -hmm. uh, for how long, how much, and so on. And it's led by MSC for Finance and MSC for Economic Development, uh, and uh, MSC Mabiakul. And we just want to start this thing mm -hmm. and say, so here we are, this is how we've been doing this thing, both in terms of individuals, in terms of companies, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, other, other pertinent issues that we're dealing with in the mm. province. So, so, so we are determined to turn it around. What's happened to the people that were implicated in the Manasseh report, for example? Well, uh, some people uh, have, have, uh, uh, are, are now out of the municipalities, uh, in fact, uh, quite a, a, a number of them. And in some uh, uh, municipality, the municipality, relevant municipality, took mm. decisions uh, to follow up in terms of uh, uh, prosecuting. And uh, um, so we, we are implementing, in other words, uh, the recommendations of the Manasseh report. And, and some have been implemented completely some are on the mm. way. So you can give an assurance to the people of KZN, no matter how high it goes up, if you're caught, you will pay the price. The, the, in fact, we, 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 we will use a, a wrong word to say that uh, there are people who are high up. Those people, as long as you are corrupt, um, uh, it, 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 when, 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 when uh, we, you get dealt with, it would remind you in the first place that you were not as high as you mm. thought.
Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you are very close by, and the law will catch up with you without getting into a plane or, or whatever. Right. So wherever you operate and you do uh, little corrupt things, uh, you will be the definitely dealt with. Yeah. Okay. Lucky uh, Mnikati, table 24. Uh, Lucky Mnikati, I think. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Premier, we, we want to testify the good story that you, you presented last week uh, on your State of the Province address. But my worry is <clears throat> uh, when it comes to small businesses, Ayawa, simply because the, the, the procurement systems are not friendly. It takes very long for, for, for the government uh, to pay the small business. How quick and how, how, uh, how simple can we make the procurement and the payment system so that the small businesses can grow? So. Okay. That's a common, That's a common drama. Problem. So why is yeah. it still a problem, though? But the payment processes and making sure these small businesses get paid on time. Because once he gets into 40 days, yeah, yeah. he's in trouble. Well, we have a, a, a specific uh, a program to improve that particular situation uh, on uh, paying people on time. And, and it's driven from treasury in our province. And I think uh, results are showing. We are not 100% uh, where we should be. Uh, but definitely have moved quite, uh, quite a long way uh, in ensuring that. And, and uh, in the new term, we will be uh, very much determined to do so because we are aware of the impact of uh, late payments uh, to small businesses. They collapse. You, you actually uh, collapse a small guy by not paying them in the, I mean, at, the, mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at the time yet that you need to pay them. And some of these businesses, are really uh, very good initiatives and they're uh, very welcome in our province. And, and therefore, we will be on the, on the side, as, as a government, on the side of small business. They must know we are on their side. Okay, how yeah. quickly, because he needs an urgent answer, how quickly will it take, uh, can you give me a date, a time frame where you can say from this date, I assure that all small businesses will be paid within 30 days or... or it, has, it has already happened. The state, no, 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 it has already happened. We know exactly that we're supposed to pay people within 30 days. 30 days of uh, submission of what uh, we need to pay. Mm. But uh, the, the, the levels of efficiencies and effectiveness of our systems mm. hasn't uh, actually reached 100%. Mm. But everybody, every official in every department, mm. head or non-head, they know 30 days is, uh, is uh, okay. the, the longest and time. So we just have to implement it and, and, and enforce it 100%. Okay. And people that are not doing it, are you going to start firing people? Because that's probably what it's going to take. <coughs> well. You, you, you ultimately, when a person you know, doesn't comply with the uh, conditions of his or her employment, that is the ultimate thing that we have to mm -hmm. face. But we don't want to e exaggerate that. We just, we just want to say to our officials, government is there and we're saying, uh, let's pay people within 30 days and it's within our means. Uh, we have it. Okay. I mean, all you have to do is to process uh, paper paperwork and you pay people within 30 days. Okay. That's all. Table 13, uh, Natin Zimande. Table 13, Natin Zimande. All right, it looks like your microphone's a problem, so we're going to get another microphone to you. Uh, and whilst that microphone is coming to you, uh, there we go. All right. Okay. M uh, morning, um, Peter and mm. Premier. I was just uh, checking that moving forward, are there any specific uh, measures in place uh, that uh, <coughs> our provincial government is, is going to put in order to increase the risk appetite? for the development finance institutions within our um, province, more especially in order to ensure that uh, emerging farmers uh, 
who, 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 who needs uh, funding. They get assisted as well as young black industrialists, basically. Thank you very much. Okay. For me? Well, the example that you, you use touches, touches on, a, on a bigger topic, uh, and that is uh, rural development. Uh, and uh, basically, your, your issue of uh, small farmers uh, is part of uh, our broader uh, vision on, on, uh, on uh, food security in our province, which uh, we are uh, quite determined uh, to face. And, and therefore, to come back uh, specifically uh, to your question, we, we, we don't want to, to talk about, um, uh, in the new term, talk about emerging farmers for five years, emerging farmer 10 years, emerging farmer 15 years, emerging farmer, but without actually providing examples of who has emerged. <coughs> uh, you, so we have to now ask that question uh, to say, now these are emerging, these have emerged, and, 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 and these are now, you know. <coughs> and, and to do that, we are going to be putting a special measure. The first thing is, uh, of course, work with the Department of Agriculture, who is um, the authority in this. Uh, uh, reconfigure our, our, our department, refocus it on, on, on specifics. Uh, and then moving from there, <coughs> we, we, we are wanting to, uh, we are working with the uh, agri, agri business. So set up a, a, a structure. Uh, uh, that that works with uh, uh, commercial agriculture, especially uh, on this particular project, uh, making sure that uh, we reach our objectives with regard to small farmers. But as I say, the bigger question is food security, and we realize that uh, the more people get into agriculture on a serious note, the more we're likely to uh, actually reach our goals as far as food security is concerned. Okay. Table 21, Maureen Magubane. Table number 21. Okay. Uh, my, uh, my question is, comes like this. I've been listening to all the political parties' manifestos. They're all saying the good things about rural women. I'm in an organization for rural women. But uh, looking at all the manifestos for the political parties, I've just noticed last week when uh, I went to the parliament and they were talking about the wage bill, which is the Women Empowerment e Equality Bill. I found that all the political parties were supporting, but uh, looking at uh, the other parties like the DA, the IFP, they were not supporting that bill, whereas in their manifestos, they are all supporting women. This bill talks about empowering of uh, women. But in your manifesto, Premier, um, and in your political manifesto, page 26 of your manifesto, it says for five years, uh, ANC will, will give the feeding schemes to women's cooperative. I just want to make sure, Premier, uh, when is that uh, going to happen, according to your manifesto? And the other thing good uh, about this province, that we have a forum now where it puts all the, uh, 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 like, uh, NAFU, NAFU, all the uh, agricultural uh, unions and organization, they've formed a forum, which I think it will be a, a platform for all the uh, small farmers to have a voice and to be heard. And the other thing, I want to thank the Department of Health to give us this dual protection. It means now we, want, we, not, we are not going to get babies at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she's raised a number of points, um, and I guess the first one yes. that's really important for her is the timeline in terms yes. of when these rural women are going to get this preference that you're talking yes. about. I, I would want to say um, <clears throat> uh, to you, if you, 
if, if you understand manifestos to be merely a set of uh, promises uh, by political parties this time around, that page that you are referring to is, the, is the, uh, totally something different. It, uh, it means that in five years, and I think you are listening to us, in five years, we are going to be delivering on, on, on that matter. And we are very determined. And uh, in Guazul Natal, we, we will play our part in, in ensuring that we, 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 we empower women. We have already uh, started. We have a number of uh, co-ops uh, that uh, have been taken on board by different uh, departments of, of government. All we are doing now is to uh, coordinate that at a, at a higher level and making sure that something concrete is going to uh, come out uh, on it. We need uh, these co-ops uh, uh, and women empowerment at the same time on, on, on our fight on, uh, uh, against uh, poverty. We have said, Peter, in Guazul Natal, mm -hmm. in the next five years, we want to deal with uh, poverty, which affects uh, no less than three million people. And we think we'll do that through food security. And we already have a program uh, that we, we discussed and agreed mm. and adopted, on, and, uh, and adopted uh, at, at our recent Lekhutla and Cabinet. And all we're doing now is to uh, refine it and then, and then implement mm. it. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a poverty eradication program uh, which uh, uh, has uh, food security as uh, mm. its, uh, its uh, main, main ingredient. And we will need uh, women co-ops yeah. in particular to do that. All and right. in the process, they get empowered. So okay. you, we, we, we are with you then. OK, so poverty is one area that uh, you said that you're definitely going to deal with. And I think in your speech you said that something like 3.7 million people are, are receiving some form of grant. And that's up from yes. 600,000 in the year 2000. You also want to create 2.1 million jobs by 2030. Where are they going to come from? And are these real jobs or job opportunities, which seems to be a buzzword at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, <coughs> we, we have a, our provincial uh, growth and development plan, which uh, is uh, part of uh, the greater framework of the national development plan. And in terms of which you want to make that contribution of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, employment opportunities and, uh, and job uh, opportunities in our province. We <coughs> first, uh, on, on, uh, on, on infrastructure, that's, that's what we are hoping. Remember, uh, uh, infrastructure, we have one example <coughs> that we want to use. In Etewini, um, three, four months ago, we launched a bridge city, which is a, a, a basically a, a infrastructure program, project, where from the greenfield, we have created a, 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 a mall a, with a, a railway line underneath, uh, meaning you shop, then you roll down uh, to, the, to the railway station and then you go home. And, and you, you, you come back on a train, you roll up, you buy, you roll down. Mm. And, and it's first of its kind, uh, quite wonderful. I, I experienced it, mm. it's there. And next to that, it's a magistrate court. And next to that, we're going to uh, build a hospital. Mm. And already you're talking about uh, 25,000 mm. jobs. Mm. But the challenge with infrastructure-based jobs is that they are not sustainable. Once the project is done, what happens to them? No, <coughs> I'm talking about shops that are already, that have already employed okay. people. Okay, all right. That have already employed people. Mm. Uh, to a uh, railway that has already been, been installed, meaning, uh, well, of course, at the time of creation, mm. uh, that would be temporal jobs, but in, term, in terms of sustainability, it's, it's ongoing. This links to uh, other road, road uh, networks which involve uh, people in the, in the taxi industry uh, who now have uh, more base uh, 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 to work on. And, and, and I'm making an example that each infrastructure uh, development project mm. leads to other, or it has uh, implications for other uh, opportunities as well. And this is how we're going to do it. But we, we're also serious in the, in the province about skilling people. 
We are happy that uh, what has happened in our province is the uh, FETs, there are going to be new, five new campuses uh, that are going to be added in our province. And we want to broaden our skill base and intensify our skill mm -hmm. space uh, through these FETs. And of course, universities, we happen to be one province mm -hmm. that has five universities and, and they are broadening their, their intake mm -hmm. and, and we welcome that. And, and these are good, but education itself at, at high school level, uh, shifting to science, shifting mm -hmm. to maths, shifting to skill space like your, your agriculture uh, and your technical subjects. And that is, mm -hmm. that is what we are doing. And uh, we are hoping that very soon we are going to All be right. repeating this. We're talking this about graduates. Uh, Tabo uh, Lietziso says, uh, how many graduates have been employed via tourism and how much does tourism contribute to KwaZulu-Natal's economy? Well, the, the biggest tourist, uh, MSC Mobiakul, will, will, will answer that question for all of us. MSC Mobiakul. Yes. If, if you could stand up. Okay. Thank you very much, Peter, and uh, to the viewers and our colleagues. Well, let me say that um, we have introduced a program that is actually uh, providing for unemployed. Uh, young people, which we have now in the last three years, in that program alone, we have taken more than 8,000 people mm. in the tourism sector. It is the only one in the country that I know of, no other province I know it has. Secondly, in terms of contribution by tourism to the provincial economy, it contributed about 22 billion rand to the provincial economy. All right, so I hope Tabo <laughs> is happy with your answer. It, uh, it has, it has yeah. to grow. Uh, we, we, we have not reached the top yeah. uh, in terms of uh, tourism. We've got quite a stake, but uh, of course uh, we, we are working on, uh, on plans to broaden this because that's our gold, yeah. that's our diamond. Okay. Uh, Lebohang is on table number eight. Uh, I can't quite read your surname, so if you could just say that. Table number eight, Lebohang, uh, your surname? It's actually a Chinese surname, Nong. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Honorable Premier. Uh, one of the most important things that our president Jacob Zuma did when he took power was, into, was to introduce performance monitoring system. I just want to know from you, for the province, do you have a similar system wherein you are able to monitor in terms of the implementation acceleration of the projects? I'm thinking about projects like Transnet expansions and all that. Do you have something in place to make sure that they are accelerated? Thank you. We, 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 we are part of South Africa, and that monitoring uh, and evaluation that you're talking about uh, were, part, were very, very, very much part of it, to a point where, in some cases, in some departments, uh, we drive it ourselves, not just uh, cooperating and working with the uh, national, and, and therefore very much we are. But I'll ask Ms. Krenya to uh, elaborate a little bit on that question. All right, okay, we're going to take a, another quick break, but uh, unemployment seems to be a theory, a, a theme that keeps coming through, and Spiwen Ngobo is going to ask you a question right after this break, and we'll also be tracking uh, those at home as well. Stay with us.